as tricky as some of these were on this page, K and L are actually surprisingly simple because they're both impossible. Remember, we talked about this before, but I'll say it again. You can never, never, never take the logarithm of zero or the logarithm of a negative number, right? Because you can't take your positive number B, whatever your base is, you know, say it's five. You can't take five to a number and get zero. You can take five to the zero power. That's okay. That would be one, right? But you can't take five or B or whatever to a power and get zero. It's impossible. So both of these are impossible from that note that we already made for ourselves. All right, now down here, we have, we're gonna graph f of x equals three to the x and g of x equals log base three of x by hand. Interesting. All right, so let me just remind you, this would be one over 27. Well, you probably didn't know that one off the top of your head, but you should know the first one. Whoops, I'm done with an upload. One. There we go. All right, so this is one right here. And then this is three, right? Because remember that as we work down the table, you multiply by three, right? Remember the base multiplier property from four, one, right? So since this is an exponential, we multiply by three to work our way down it. This last one will be 27. All right. So then to work our way up, it will divide by three. So this one is one third, and this one is one over nine. Three times three makes nine, right? You're dividing by three again. And then you divide by three again, you get one over 27, which is the one I started with, just because I knew that one off the top of my head. All right, now I wanna do g of x is equal to the log base three of x. Right, so I'm gonna start with, the negative ones are kind of not so much fun, but I can start with these ones. Let me start with one. All right, so let me see this. What's the log base three of one? Did you say zero? Hopefully you did, right? Because the log base three, any, log base anything of one is zero, right? Because three to the zero power is one. So that one's zero. What about, ooh, I don't know, how about three? What's the log base three of three? One, right? Are you noticing a pattern here? You know what I'm gonna pick next, right? Nine. If I do that, the log base three of nine is equal to two. And then 27, oops, I'm not wide enough for that. There we go. Log base three of 27 is three, right? Because three to the third power is 27. I'm not gonna do all of these just because they wouldn't be practical, but I'll put this one in here. If you have a third, then the log base three of a third is equal to negative one, right? And so on and so on and so on, whoops. Okay, so this one, if I take these two right here, just for the sake of it, put them in right there. This would be negative three, this would be negative two. All right. Okay, interesting, good to know. So now we're gonna graph them. So we're gonna graph the two functions, three to the x and log base three of x on this lovely curve, now that we've used these. So let me go do that, I'll be right back. There it is, just like that. Oops, I, I suppose I should change my, hold on, my, my tick marks, hold on. There you go, just because it got a little crowded in there. All right, and you can see there's three to the x and there's the log base three of x. Can you see that they're inverses, right? You know what, let me add in a line for you. Let me add in y equals x just so you can see it coming down the center. I'll make it dashed because it's not really there. But do you see how there are mirror images across that line? Ah, okay, so. Um, let's see, 3 to the x and the log base 3 of x are reflections of each other across the line y equals x because they are inverses of each other, right? 
kind of a bigger deal than you realize. I mean, that's the whole thing about a logarithm is a logarithm is an exponential. It's, it's the inverse of an exponential. It undoes an exponential. And that's what we write right down here. Right? An exponential function, b to the x, then its inverse is log base b of x. And a logarithmic function, log base b of x, then its inverse is b to the x. They're inverses of each other. That's the whole point with a logarithm, right? We want to, you know, mathematicians never like doing anything without knowing how to undo it. So the logarithm is how we undo an exponential. Exponential being where the variable is up in the exponent. All right, let's look at the domain of that logarithmic function. The logarithmic one, by the way, is this maroon one right here. So let's look at that. Now remember, domain is left to right. So the farthest left this graph gets to the farthest right. Well, I kind of stopped at 1 over 27. But there was nothing special about that. I could have kept going, right? Because there's a negative 4 would go to 1 over 81, and negative 5 would go over to whatever that, that is, right? So the domain here, remember this is left comma right right so that's zero comma infinity it never actually reaches zero so you have to use parentheses for it because it doesn't actually get to that point if it got there with like a solid dot then you would use a bracket like a hard um, right angle bracket kind of a thing all right that's the domain now the range is down to up right how far down does the graph get how far up does it get well, the lowest this graph ever gets is negative forever, right? Because I could keep going and going and going, right? To negative numbers, negative numbers. It just gets so tiny that the computer program stops drawing it. But they're still there. They're just really, really, really tiny. Okay, so the farthest down this thing gets is negative infinity. And the farthest up it gets is positive infinity because it's going to keep going and going and going, getting higher and higher and higher. I only went to three, but I could have kept going past that, right? So it just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing like a slow mountain climber, my kind of mountain climber. All right, so there's the domain and range of a logarithmic function. Now let's find these inverses by hand. Now, okay, remember the whole big process and all of that. Let me go back from 5, 1, do, 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 right here. Now notice what it says, right? The inverse of a function that's not a model, and you got all these steps and all this jazz. And then up here, right, do, 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 we had these. But these were all for, if you remember the title of the section, linear functions, mx plus b. Now, if it's not a linear function, then it's the same process, but it's a lot harder to do, so we don't really do them in this class. But for this one, we do do it for the logarithmic one because logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other. That makes it really easy to find the inverse function. You say, okay, if g of x is 5 to the x, then g inverse of x is equal to the log base 5 of x. That's it. No must, no fuss. No fighting it, no like, you know, having to solve for x, no four-step process, none of that stuff. Just it's log base 5 of x. That's it. All right, then for this one, k inverse, k inverse of x is equal to, well, that one was a logarithm to start, so its inverse is an exponential, 14 to the x, like that. Done. Okay. All right, so... When you get to the test, if, you, if you're my student or wherever, don't lose points on this. This is easy stuff, right? Don't think you have to go do that huge process. So that big process that we gave you with all the steps, that's for linears, right? Linear functions. This is how you do it for logarithms and exponentials. They're just easy as pie because that's what a logarithm is. It is the inverse of an exponential. Done. All right, now let's do down here. I've got h of x equals 4 to the x. So I want to find f of, oh, that's a typo. That's h of 3, sorry. h of 3. This should be h inverse, sorry. I should have changed the name on that. Okay, so h of 3, I'm just going to take h of 3. I'm going to put 4 to the 3. 4 to the 3, which is 64. Done. That's all there is to it. You're substituting into the original function because it's just plain h. Now for letter B, that's a little bit different. There's two ways we can do this. 
We can do this by setting it equal to 16 or by finding the inverse function. Let's find the inverse function. H inverse of x is equal to the log base 4 of x, right? So if I want h inverse of, whoopsie, h inverse of, what was it? 16, 16. That's equal to the log base 4 of 16, which hopefully everybody knows is 2, right? Because it's the log base 4 of, here, let me put it this way, 4 squared, which is 2. That's one way you can do it. So that's way number one, right? So way number one is to find the inverse function. Way number one, find inverse function. And you can do that. That's fine. I like it. Way number two would be just to set original equal to 16, right? Because the original function is 4 to the x. And remember, in an inverse function, when you see that 16, that's y from the original function. Because remember, the y and x is switch places. So it's 16. And then you go, oh, x has got to be 2, right? Because 2 squared or 4 squared makes 16. So either way, you can get the right answer. And it's helpful for your notes to write both of them down because you might need both of them for later purposes. Okay? All right, we only have a few minutes left, so let's get through the Richter scale and we're done. The Richter number, when you hear an earthquake on the news, they'll say, you know, it had a Richter number of 2.5 or 8.9 or something like that. Okay, so there's something called a reference amplitude and a regular amplitude. Sorry. So what happens is, hold on one sec. There we go. So amplitude is, and there's a whole bunch of pictures. I Google imaged this, right? But amplitude is basically a distance from the, the middle part up to the top of a peak for a wave, right? So it goes up and down and up and down. In an earthquake, this gets really big, right? Normally, there's a reference amplitude, like the ground just has a normal, very small amplitude. And then an earthquake happens and it goes way up and makes this big wave, right? The ground kind of, well, literally it makes a wave if you see it from space, that kind of thing. Right? So that's what the Richter number is. It's the ref it's the log of the earthquake amplitude, which is capital A, over the reference amplitude, which is how much amplitude that particular area is. So like the ground you stand on right now has a tiny bit of wave movement to it because we're bobbing on the sea of that magma underneath the, the crust. So it has a little bit, but it's so tiny we can't really tell it unless we have instruments for it. And then the earthquake amplitude is A. So in 1906 in San Francisco there was an um, there was an earthquake, really bad one, caused a huge fire and burned down most of the city. It had an amplitude of 2 times 10 to the 8th times the reference amplitude A0. And then in 1989 there was an earthquake, I remember it was around the time of the um, World Series, and it had an amplitude of 8 times 10 to the 6th times A0. Find the Richter number of both quakes. There we go. I had to kind of move this quickly along. But what happens is it's 2 times 10 to the 8th times the reference amplitude. See that? So I had to put it times A0 because A0 is the reference amplitude. But then it's divided by A0, so that all disappears. And so you're basically stuck taking the log of 2 times 10 to the 8th with your calculator. I don't have a calculator on me right now, so let me Google that. Hold on. And let me just show you this right here. This is going to be correct. I'll do it again. I'm, I'm not working off of a calculator because I don't have one right this second. But when you use the button on the calculator that's E to the 8th, right here, it's above your comma button. There's like a block letter E. If you hit that and do log 2, then hit that button. So block letter E, 8, that's correct, right? That's times 10 to the, remember that scientific notation. We learned that in section 4.1. So that was an 8.3 Richter number. 8.3. There we go. Or if you like, you can type it in at, you know, 2 times 10 carat 8. You can do it that way, too. All right, let me type up the next one, 1989. One sec. There it is. So it's going to be 8 times 10 to the 6 times that reference amplitude again. So that's going to cancel out. I'm just going to leave you 6.9. And again, I don't have a calculator, but I can show it to you right here. Log of 8. Then you hit that E button. It's above your comma on a calculator. 6 enter 6.9 just like I said it was all right we're all done with that section